So you found yourself hitting level 10 and entering the beautiful land of Cyrodiil, a massive, totally PvE area. Yeah, that sounds like fun. It's probably just like Oblivion. Well, that's where I lied, Timmy, and where you sound like a moron. Okay! Let's see what happens to Timmy when he goes to Cyrodiil with level 10 knowledge. Watch out, world, because here comes Timmy! Okay, yes, before we even start, yes, I did make a PvP guide video back in the day, but it has probably aged as well as Sonic Adventures have, so let's do this. Today, we are going to be covering all the PvP stuff you need to know in order to understand what the heck you're doing when you find yourself in this situation. How did I get here? First off, before anything else, choose your home campaign and your guest campaign. Remember, your home campaign is your leadership board's campaign. That's where you're actually going to be able to rank up. So if you want to take a certain campaign seriously, go into your home campaign. Alright, so you've entered Cyrodiil and now you've got- Oh man, Kev, do it sir, I'm not ready for this, I want to go home. I told you not to come, Harold, why- okay, It doesn't matter. The way shrine out of Cyrodiil is right over there, in your home keep, in the back. To leave Cyrodiil, got it? Anyways, for those of you ready to fight, you can either go out into the battlefield solo, or if you want to be included in a group, type LFG in chat, and someone is bound to take you in like the stray dog you are. For those of you wondering, Cyrodiil does indeed have all of the luxuries of home at your main base. You've got your bank, your stables, crafting stations, you name it. It's like a big sleepover at your best buddy's place. The only thing you won't have is your mommy and daddy to come pick you up when the action gets too intense, nerd! So, one important thing to remember is that if you're going out to Cyrodiil for sieging castles, head to your local keep siege merchant to purchase a bunch of crap to help you burst down the walls of your enemies. Remember, stuff like flaming oil, wall and door repair kits, that is when you're defending. Then you've got stuff like battering rams for doors, catapults and trebuchets for walls and doors, and the occasional player. Meat bags and ballistas for heavy player damage. Daggerfall, this may be a new concept, but pugging a castle with siege stuff really does help, imagine that. Alright, a quick run over of your locations here. These are keeps, capturable by anyone. These right here, these are towns, which can be taken over by anyone and used as teleport locations for your alliance and to buy specific PvP sets. These are outposts, like a keep without a wall, so all you have to do is break down the door and yell, Here's Johnny! And that'll definitely get the enemy's attention. These little trinkets around castles are called resources. Capturing the enemy resources will actually cut them off from being able to spawn at that keep. Plus, if you have the continuous attack perk, it'll give you tons of bonus damage and recovery. These here are your alliance's gates, and if these are open, your alliance is doing something very wrong. Once these bad boys are open, the enemy is gonna charge in like the flood from Halo and try to steal your scrolls, which are your PvP bonuses. Speaking of which, Castle CG. If you're involved with that part of PvP, make sure you come well equipped to actually help out your teammates by being a killing machine, or just help them with heals and shields. Trust me, it goes a long way. Hey Paul, you mind shielding me? Well, of course, Bill. Just let me find my ability to shield you and Dang, I don't think I have it unlocked. What have you done, Paul? When sieging castles, come prepared. Having things like a forward siege camp will allow your team to have a close spawn area. Placing down siege weaponry allows you and other players to actually knock down the walls, and regardless if you actually use them or not, it'll all count towards your alliance point gain in the end. What exactly are Alliance Points? Well, you complete Trash Aldermary Dominion Mosquito in my ear. Alliance Points, or AP, is the currency of PvP. You kill a nerd, boom, AP. You siege a castle, boom, more AP. If you stare in the general direction of Chuck Norris's existence, boom, AP. And what exactly does AP do? You get to buy stuff! Around Cyrodiil are vendors at the different towns and in your Alliance home base. Here you can use AP to buy siege weaponry, set pieces, resources, and on the weekend you can go to the golden vendor to buy very rare jewelry and monster pieces. And next up we've got skill changes. Remember, this is not PvE anymore. A lot of morphs of your abilities have become what I like to call Ebonheart Pact otherwise known as useless. It's not such a bad idea to head to a shrine and reset all of your morphs, especially if you're gonna take PvP seriously. Make sure your abilities are focused on killing players rather than killing ads. 
Finally, let's talk about questing. Yes, there are actually quite a number of quests to partake in while you fight out in Cyrodiil. At your home base, you'll find quests that send you out to complete Alliance War-based activities, such as... Capturing Elder Scrolls, scouting out different locations, killing plenty of enemy scrub lords, capturing specific enemy resources, and finally, Kevdoit is a nerd. Okay, do you think this is funny, Harold? And actually, finally, capturing specific enemy keys. Also, for those of you PvE nerds wanting more quests, head off to the local towns. There you will find two different helpless peasants wanting you to work for them. They will both offer you a handful of daily repeatable quests, each one giving you 250 AP, around 300 gold, a ton of XP, and a reward container with a PvP set piece obtainable from that town. Anywho, I can see that look in your eye. Thirsty and ready for battle. But remember one thing, a kill move to instantly make all of your enemies die without even looking at them. Because all you need to do is to...